Hey everybody, welcome back to another week and another episode here at Vanta Plus Boon. Today I got to talk to Jane Sutherland. She is a body positivity activist or a self-love advocate. I love that term. And she's someone that I've been following on Instagram for quite a while. And her page and her message is just, it's something that, that has really stood out to me and really inspired me and encouraged me in my own journey towards finding self-love, self-appreciation, learning how to be gentle and kind to myself. And I just love the way she approaches that whole message. She's really incredible and I feel so lucky that I got to chat to her today. So hope you really enjoy this episode. Uh, follow her on Instagram and enjoy. How are you today? You look so amazing. I love your, is it a dress? It was so nice to put a dress on today. <laughs> I also had that. I was like, yeah, I gotta, I gotta make an effort, put on a nice shirt, you know, feel good. I thought the same thing. I was like, am I going to go for a shirt? And then just like my PJ bottoms. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's how I've done like, like half of the other ones. It's just been like casual bottoms and like a, an okay shirt. I think that's everybody in like their work meetings at the moment. It's crazy. I don't blame them. Oh my gosh. <laughs> how are you today? I am well. Yeah. I feel so happy to be speaking to you. Yeah, me too. I also, oh. I've been so looking forward to it. I'm really glad we could do it. How are you this morning? Afternoon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> What's the time? What is the time? Is, I don't even know what the day is half the time. I'm good. I had a, like a, a little bit of a sleep in and then we had like a, a breakfast with the family. And then I was like, okay, cool. Let me just you know, I haven't been like feeling super motivated to do any exercising stuff. So I was like, no, let me just do some stretching. So then I followed like a, a 10 minute YouTube thing of like literally just stretching my body. And it felt, it was so good. I was like, why don't I do this more? I'm just like the least flexible person on this planet. I should do this every day. But it was good. Okay. How's yeah. your morning? What have you done today? I actually had a very similar morning as you were explaining your morning. I also, I slept in, which I don't, I usually can't do because my body clock is usually like six o'clock let's go <laughs> but yeah this lockdown has actually given me the opportunity to not have to rush anyway and realize like I could continue in that mindset of like rushing or I could just allow myself to be so it was really nice to just yeah. ease into the morning and I, I did the same thing I just stretched my body and then I realized oh actually I feel like hopping around a bit <laughs> and I put some like dance music on and then I just started and it was so good. It felt so nice to actually just sweat because when I woke up this morning, I actually, I felt so much dread. I don't know. I thought like another day. Mm -hmm. That was actually the first thing that, that hit me. And then, and it was interesting just like allowing that, that feeling to, to sit and be, and then kind of have that choice to either allow myself to get up in that feeling and continue to operate in that feeling or just recognize it and be gentle and kind of take the steps that I know I need to take yeah. to be able to just be gentle with, with that feeling. Cause I think it's very real. Like there's no, we can't say tomorrow I'm going to wake up and feel this way and do this thing. And yeah. Yeah. Even, really, even, even as much as you like want to plan to, like I was, I was telling you the other day, Oh yeah, you know, I'm going to be yeah. so productive and I'm going to do all this. And then literally the past two days I woke up and I was so exhausted and I was just like, yeah. I feel like I haven't done anything to like warrant this exhaustion, but yeah, yeah it's that, that, that whole thing of just, like you said, just allowing yourself and allowing your body just, okay, cool. Today's a day that you can just chill and do nothing. And then mm. the next day you can make, make plans. Yeah. It's fascinating to me as well to realize how much my mind likes and feels like a sense of we got this, if I can like validate it. And I think so much of, of learning to be is to actually just allowing it to be mm. and not needing that. I, I need someone to like this picture for it to be nice. I need my body to look this way for it to be healthy, happy, worthy, kind of just allowing. And, and yeah, I'm, I'm learning that yeah. hectic. <laughs> learning that's that something, I feel like that's something that I've also learned a lot from you, you know, like, like my original approach to things like exercise and that kind of thing. I was like, Oh, you know, like do exercise, do a cardio, do this. And, you know, it was ever since you started sharing on Insta, like all these different ways, Hey, why don't you just dance and have like fun with it? 
and that that was something that like really was such a nice shift from a mindset so i think last week you know in like the first few days of of the lockdown i was like okay cool i'm going to i'm going to do what jane said and i'm going to just like i tried to do a like a dance like follow on a dance workout i loved your dance last night so i just want to say that <laughs> It was I so stupid. It. I had so much fun though. I was just like standing in my so lounge. I was like, oh gosh, this is so, so ridiculous. And it was, yeah, and I did that, you know, I've always, I, before, always fancied myself like, oh yeah, I can dance. I have rhythm. And then I tried to do like this follow along coordinated like dance workout. And it was no, so hard. <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't do the feet. I can do like the other stuff, but oh, my no. feet don't connect. There's no connection. I'm always humbled. <laughs> <laughs> like, and then I realized like how important it is to just dis, like, discard mirrors and just like allow dancing has been one of the most healing and embodying journeys of like me coming back into my body mm-hmm. and also realizing like in that it's going to be uncomfortable like yeah I remember like moving for the first time really like conscious moving like being like okay I'm going to be with my body and I do it many times before actually I go to sleep so it would be very still in the house. I'd put headphones in. I'd be in my underwear. So like as most vulnerable I could be in my body. It was just me and my body. And allowing that movement to actually heal and me to create awareness in my body. Like, oh my goodness, that's my hip. Feel your hip. Yeah. Like those are your feet. Feel your feet. Because I think sometimes, I don't know, we crave connection and we feel this disconnect from ourselves. But instead of and I'm saying this to myself, instead of like coming back into the body, it's like, which diet can I go on? Which person can I reach out to, to validate me and help mm-hmm. me connect? And, and it's this hunger, this deep, deep hunger. And for me, it, it was just, I, I was always empty searching for it outside. And so much of it coming back into the body yeah. is helping me fill that. Like and even genuinely. like, even like stepping away from like your own ego, you know, like yeah. that, that was something when I, when I was at UCT, I was like, cool, I'm going to join the UCT hip hop club because I, I can dance and I'm going to have so much fun. And I went there and I've, it was the weirdest experience to me because I felt so embarrassed of myself. Cause I like, I, like I couldn't move or do the things. And, and it was, I remember this, I have this memory of like watching this guy there he was just, he looked a bit ridiculous, but he was so free and he like, Mm -hmm. he was just committing. And I was, you know, I had, I hadn't seen someone just be like so free and not caring about what some, what other people think he was just having the best time. And it was such a lesson to me because in that moment I was like, Oh my gosh, like, look at that guy. And then I was like, Mm -hmm. this is also like my own reaction because like, I feel I I can't like let that wall down in this moment and just have fun with it. I was so self-aware and, you know, you have that big mirror in front of you and you're like watching yourself and it was this whole thing of comparison. And I never, I never went back. I was like, cool, never doing this again. But now I like, I wish that I could go back in time and just be like, ah, just like let go, just have a fun time. Like that guy was just having the most fun. And it's that whole thing of like your mind and, you know, taking yourself too seriously or like I have to look or be a certain way and I don't want other people to see me making a fool of myself. No, I completely relate. Children teach us that, hey? Like they just let, like that childlike spirit of like, it really is that dancing like no one's watching, eating like no one's dictating what I need to eat, feeling what I need to feel. If I need to feel it in the middle of a shopping center, I'm going to feel it. And it's so Mm -hmm. fascinating how whether it's a parental figure or society, however that conditioning plays out as we get older, but we become so, what's interesting is because it becomes self-aware, but really it's aware of the ego. So it's like, it's just, I completely relate though, even to that dancing thing of just feeling, and it's so, it's like a, it's a visceral experience. Like you feel so uncomfortable. You're like arrested by this, like, un, like uncomfortableness. Mm-hmm. But yeah, and it's fascinating how, even this morning I was reflecting on, the more I'm judging myself, the more I'm judging other. Like it doesn't, that's where it flows from. Like it yeah. doesn't, I, I don't get to in, like look at that man and all his, his-ness and be in my-ness if I'm not allowing me to be me. Yeah. And it's just, it's so beautiful when that connection is made, the more I get to let myself be, the more I'm like, you do you. And that could be anything. Like, 
it's it's very beautiful and it's liberating it really it's, yeah and i think i don't know like even just in this whole dance topic i don't know if you were on campus at the time where there was that girl who used to dance on the jammy plaza like with her earphones and she just used to like she used to practice routines yeah she used to practice like these crazy (laughs) hip-hop routines and people would kind of like stand around her and there was always this like kind of strange thing of like people being a bit judgmental and being like oh my god like look at that girl like what's she doing or but also at the same time I think it was this thing of like people being like wow she's she's like she's just so free she doesn't care she's dancing and and practicing and having fun and like this is her space that she can do it so and I always think like wow I don't don't even know if she knows you know like how how famous she was on campus it's like a UCT (laughs) dance single yeah it was so cool yeah it was really cool when um when like I've learned in this journey and will continue to learn it's like the more my light is going to look so different from your light and her light and what's beautiful is when you see somebody else shining their light in what they love, you're only inspired to shine your own light in what you love. Mm-hmm. And I think it's interesting, but it's such a mind shift because then sometimes like, the thought can come in of like, I need to dance like her too, to be shining a light. And it's like, really that light and that you're going to discover for yourself is going to look different from hers. Exactly. It's, yeah, it's so inspiring though, because when that shift is made, it becomes this beautiful thing of everybody just, it sounds so cheesy, but everybody shining their lights. <laughs> everybody just like living their best, their best lives. That's just the yeah. way, the way it should be. Yeah. yeah it is. I think when, you know, whenever I recognize like in my mind, I'm like, Ooh, how can they do that? It's because I'm holding myself back in an area mm-hmm. and it's like so uncomfortable. <laughs> and then I'm having like, that, like I'm having in- that conversation with yourself of being like, Ooh, no. like, why do I have mm-hmm. such a strong opinion on like something that is none of my business basically, you know, yeah. and you have to really check in with yourself. It's, yeah. it's wild. It really is. It is. Yeah. It calls you to be so brave to have that like introspective conversation. And really, like I say to myself and I encourage my friends and anyone to just be gentle. Like there's, you can't, for me also living when I lived under the rules of diet culture and right and wrong, and you can eat this, you can't eat that. And um, so it was such an on and off all or nothing mentality that it was actually addressing that mentality and realizing I can't take that same mentality into being free. I can't say now you're free, like act free. So it has to be this, or it doesn't have to be anything, but it's really just coming in with a love and a a gentleness towards yourself and going, even if you can't look at it all today, what does a little bit look like? If I just look at it a little bit, just peek under the covers of what that discomfort looks like. Because for me, buying into and selling, like really giving myself over to diet culture was, was a way of just numbing that and not feeling anything and and sadly that steals joy it steals connection Mm -hmm. so the more we are brave to kind of look at the uncomfortable the more love and and joy is released as well yeah how did you how did you first like start practicing that idea of gentleness with yourself like how how did that process come to be for you yeah so much of it really rests in acceptance like just giving permission I, Mm -hmm. I remember the exact, like, I remember the moment it was so liberating because I'd never before that moment allowed myself to actually just be. I was, I felt like I was always in this striving mode of needing to achieve a body, needing to achieve and earn my space that, that I never felt worthy of taking up. So it was yeah. almost like this projection of the less my body takes up, the more it can actually be there. But it really, really was like, it really rests in acceptance. And I think every day that's the one day at a time, a little bit at at a time. It's how can I actually just accept myself in this moment and give permission for how I'm feeling and how I am. And in that, it it radically has such an impact on things that I thought I needed to control, the size of my body, the way I was eating. It liberates that for me because it's just, I'm actually just going to let my body be, let my feelings be. What does that look like? What does that feel like? So for me, it was the the love came afterwards. It wasn't like I was running after love. Yeah. It it naturally 
and it's so powerful because it's so enmeshed with respect and with care and and I loved it the other night when you said like how I wouldn't speak to my best friend like that I wouldn't I wouldn't speak to a small child like that why would I want to deprive myself or ignore myself like if a small child is coming to you and saying I'm so hungry or I feel like this or mm. I feel this way someone was mean to me or I understood a situation like this we'd never shut her down and invalidate her yeah and it's learning for me to kind of give that little girl space and go I can totally understand why you'd feel upset about that that's upsetting me mm. Yeah. Yeah. That was like, I mean, I, I told you before on the phone, but just for like context is like the way that you, the way that you had described that of, of our relationship with ourselves, we have to treat that as a relationship and, and yeah. how you would, you would never speak to a partner or a friend or a family member or, you know, you'd never even a stranger. Them. Yeah. Ex yeah. It's even crazy, just yeah. a person, even just any yeah. person. And, you know, it's, like I have this thing where I struggle because it's like so easy for me to be aware of, of those things. And I know like, this is what kindness looks like. This is how you should apply it to yourself. But then that actual application process is so difficult because it's like, yeah, yeah. Like, like love yourself, love this. But then, you know, it's that moment of walking past the mirror and being like, Oh, if only I, if only I had like a thinner waist or this was different or that was different. And it's yeah. like, it's just that whole cycle of, of trying to break that, that like one chain in that link to kind of just even it all out. And it's so yeah. difficult. It is. It takes hard work and commitment. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing is, I think I, I remind myself this every day, is that if I don't do it in one moment, I get another moment. It's like this beautiful synchronicity of being able to, to get another moment to practice it again. Because mm -hmm. in that moment... There's no, yes, I, I did it perfectly right. It's going to ebb and flow. And when, and I think it's just fascinating when that awareness is being built, how you realize my body became a space that I could project a lot of negativity onto. And if there was negativity out there that I felt I wasn't um, expressing my feelings towards or, um, yeah, just looking at in a, in a, empowered way I'd say like I give myself permission to be able to call something out I project it onto my body like if I couldn't be brave in a in a friendship or in a relationship and say hey I can't actually do that right now or like boundaries just learning my boundaries and also learning that they change and they shift and to check in with that as well but just kind of for me it was building this relationship where I was no longer going to take it out on my body like yeah. it wasn't going to be and when, I, and when it does happen, because it does, there's also that, I think there's so much humility and actually just saying like, it's still going to happen. It doesn't mean it all disappears because now you're doing it perfectly. Mm -hmm. It's building that awareness. And I think with that, you can go like, okay, this is happening right now. It's really uncomfortable. I know I'm not alone. And then you work on those strategies that you know are going to yeah. help you in that moment. Yeah. I've like, I've started trying to sort of put into practice because I have this like a really terrible habit where I'll see like a photograph of myself from like a while, like a year ago or two years ago, whatever. And like my first instinct thought or what I say is like, wow, look, look how thin I was back then. Or, oh, look at my body. Look at this. Instead of, you know, like I'm trying to practice now being like, okay, cool. Like that's, that's the appearance of the photo. But like, what is the context of it? Like, I need to remember like, okay, cool. What was I actually going through in that time? Like, what was my, what was my real happiness like, you know, because yeah. just because I was maybe thin, which maybe I didn't recognize it back then doesn't mean I was happy. You know, there was, there was so many things and it's, I'm really good at taking accountability, like of, of actions that I've done either wrong towards other people or always trying to be introspective in that way. But when it comes to things like my appearance and like acceptance of self and in that point of view it's always so much harder to to apply so i'm really trying to put into practice being like okay cool not noticing my body as the first thing that the photo mm -hmm. conveys but like oh what was the emotion what was like the memory yeah. of that day yeah i think that's so beautiful because it takes yourself into entirety mm -hmm. it looks at yourself as a whole being and i think for so long i also had to just call it out and go perhaps i was conditioned to believe I was only a body or that was all that I could bring to a table 
and and often I didn't even think I could bring it to a table I wasn't even worthy of being at the table so it was like I'll just stand in the corner and maybe no one will see me but it's like it really is I think also it was a powerful shift for me when I remember um, at the beginning of my recovery I, I looked at a picture of myself and I I kind of just had to go this is just a picture of me it's not even me mm -hmm. like just having that that shift like you said of like there was so much behind this and I think because we live in such a time where photographs are like everywhere yeah and I don't know if we've ever seen ourselves more or, or it's just so accessible yeah, so and also there's there's that distortion and that I mean it's just powerful to even realize in, in one mindset you can look at yourself and think certain things and you can be in a different mindset the next day look at a picture of yourself and then show the picture to someone else and they can have a completely different yeah a completely different perspective of it yeah. yeah it is it's really I, I like I like how you say that like this is just a photo it's like not it's not yeah. even like the essence of what makes me me in that photo like you know you can capture yeah. that and it's beautiful but like yeah it's that's that's such a great a really great way to put it that's really yeah. cool it, it helped me to just release that pressure I remember I wasn't even aware that there was this pressure, but I would put so much pressure, like that's going to be me. It's like, mm -hmm. no. that was just you, even in a, in a moment, you, you move and you breathe and you speak and you, there's just so much more to you. Yeah. And yes. even with that, even with that whole thing of like, how you say now we're in like the time more than ever of being bombarded with imagery and expectation yeah. and pressure. And it's, it's so insane how that bleeds into so many like facets of life because for example with i'm part of this like one big facebook group of, of a bunch of nail techs around the world and the thing that i come across the most on that page is people's anxiety to post what they've done like they don't want to share nails they've done because they're insecure about how people are going to react to it or is it good enough to post and and i have such a strong thing of being like just post just like, who cares, you know, just, just do it. But, you know, it's this whole thing. I, I have another friend who she completely quit social media just because it brought so much anxiety for her of like typing up a caption, for example, yeah. was just like, what was the right thing to say? And should she say this and which picture would represent the right thing? And, you know, I think like I've been quite lucky and maybe, maybe, maybe in more of a subconscious kind of a way, but it's never like overthinking what I, what I want to post or what it is. It's just like, ah, oh, post it. You know, I don't care. Especially when it's like, well, with nails and that kind of a thing. Yeah, it is. It's like this weird, strange, strange pressure of like saying the right thing and looking like the right thing. And that doesn't exist. Yeah. But, but I think, just believe that it does. Yeah. I, I really, I, that speaks to me because I think, I think we all have this need to be understood. I need to be seen and I think sometimes I sit and, and I recognize like a fear when I post something um, it pops up along with other things that pop up <laughs> but um, am I going to be understood in this and then I have to sit beside myself and go you are allowed like also I think what really helps me is I'm completely separate from my social media like I'm completely separate from what I create what I share what I say, there is, there's parts of me in it, mm -hmm. but I think it's really, for me, it's very healthy to see them as separate because then it's not this like, here I am. Yeah. Like that's very, very nerve wracking um, because I don't think we ever, like we can never be, when we're, we're not done, like we're not done learning, we're not done expressing. And there's this, I think sometimes if I feel arrested by a fear to share a thought that I have or an experience that I had, um, it's because I think I have to have figured it out in that moment. And, and I free myself from that, like release that pressure of just going like, actually in the next moment, I'm allowed to feel and think completely differently because yeah. I've learned something else. And it just allows this like flow and freedom with self of going, I am actually allowed to be and express because I think when you, there's so much joy in creating and sharing, there's so much connection in it. Mm -hmm. And I think if I allow myself to be arrested by a very real fear of like, what are people going to think? And all these things, like the story in my head, um, then I'm just, I'm keeping my, yeah. like the girl on the jammy steps. I'm going to keep my light in and not allow people to see my expression. Exactly. And then other people won't 
they won't get like the I don't even know how to word it. They won't take like the cue to be like, oh, I can also do this yeah. thing or I can yeah. also be inspired by it. You know, yeah. I can like, and I can really understand social media anxiety. It's such a, it's such a yeah. real thing. Like that whole idea of, you know, comparison being the thief of joy, like it really is. Yeah. And it's such a, it's such a difficult thing to stop yourself from doing, you know, even all of us do it. Even when I'm creating and I'm posting stuff yeah. online you know, I'll see another, like another nail tech who's posted like a dope set of nails. And my first thought is, oh, you know, why am I not that good? Or why didn't I do that? And I have to just remember like time, you know, some people have been doing this for so long. And even if it was the first set of nails they ever painted, we all have our, our different, our different strengths and it's constantly yeah. growing. Like you said, we're not, we're not done. We never finished learning. And that is yeah. such an important thing. Mm. yeah it's like the only one i'm the only one of me and you're the only one of you she's yeah. actually said like that's quite a powerful thing to think of like when you actually think of it deeply yeah it, it'll for me it just rocks everything mm. um and i really relate because i recognize it because it's i think i'll i'll never say it doesn't ever happen to me because it happens every day that i go onto social media and i'm aware of because it's such an emotionally charged space and i think to go on with intention helps me and then also to go on with an awareness and then also when I can't be on to really look at why I can't and take that space mm. and go okay I'm also not going to judge when I can't go on and I'm forcing something there's I think it's, it is navigating that the boundaries yeah. around social media and and how you show up then also just giving yourself the freedom to to be yeah such yeah. a, I think it's so place. powerful. Yeah. Cause for so long for me, it was, I, I wasn't aware of it, but I was finding my identity in my body. I was finding my, I, I was holding onto it. Like I, I do exist because look how hard I'm working on improving myself and look how much. Yeah. I, I, I really, it took a, a lot of bravery to kind of look at it and go, yeah, before I knew my name, I knew how much I weighed. And before I knew wonderful characteristics about myself I thought it was rested on the way that mm. I looked and how much I qualified because I put the qualification yeah. in those terms and conditions and it really was a coming home process to Jane when I just actually allowed myself to be yeah and was that you know that that constant like awareness of of your body rather than what's inside you know mm. how 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 like can you remember how early that 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 began for you i think it was creepy like it creeps in like when the more i reflect on it and the more and i think also with undoing it it's the slow process of mm -hmm. like oh i can look a bit more at it and i think and also in that way even in my recovery that little voice can creep back and start trying to convince you like oh remember this food is scary or remember what this can do and it's and for me now, it's really looking at it and going, okay, I hear you. And how can I challenge you with kindness? Maybe mm. it isn't eating you. Maybe it's eating a little bit of you, but it's not going like, and I, I don't want to be, but like, if you, I'm going to eat this, like getting angry about it, but it's yeah. actually just building that awareness. But to get to your question, it was, it was so, it became this, like, it was like a normal thing. I think around 11, 12 years old of like, I just started to hear conversations around me of, um, you know, that you can control your weight with this thing called diets. And it was like a normal thing as a young girl being around older women and hearing how they'd speak about their bodies. And I don't know, it just became this hyper awareness of body. And then I started feeling a lot bigger than all my friends. I was quite a lot taller, but that's when I think like a dysmorphia started to, to build. Mm. and yeah for me when I reflect on it it just seemed normal it seemed completely normal to maybe not take lunch to school it and then I will say like I take responsibility for the way that diets became something very different in my life like it did become a it did manifest into an eating disorder but and I'm not saying that diets do that for everybody like some I, I completely also recognize everybody has a different experience with yeah. this but I think it's important to just have an awareness about the conversation of the impact that this construct can have. 
like this yeah it just it it it's a creepy creeper <laughs> it really yeah. is yeah like just the things and that's something that that i've that i've been so conscious about like you know as i'm getting older and my like my partner mj you know his sister has two girls and it's this mm -hmm. constant thing of of me thinking about like if and when i have children one day you have to be also so careful around that because there's so many parents who who use food either as like reward or punishment or you know like subtle comments that people can make that can be so deeply embedded and i'm like oh my god i don't want to i don't want to pass out pass down like my residual issues that i have you know and you know create like generational i don't know generational like suffering. identity yeah exactly yeah yeah for me it, it was suffering because it's i just think that there is a responsibility that we have to ourselves to be become more aware of the way that we speak about our bodies the mm -hmm. way that we speak about food and there's no I, I i never want to condemn anyone or like i i think we all in a learning process i am as well i'm, I'm learning this every day and becoming more aware of it every day but i think there's a responsibility because it's real yeah it's very very real and it's not a joke and because there's stuff under it for me there was so much stuff attached to it if if my identity if myself was at stake that's enough for us to have a look at this thing and go maybe another conversation needs to be had and i'm so grateful for that there is yeah there is too. this conversation of going like hey wait a minute like just even in the simple of like there are no good or bad foods like that is it, it just rocks me it really does because for so long i just operated in this conditioned mentality i don't remember when i took it on i don't like it just was like this normal thing i just joined a conversation i don't yeah. know and then it had it it had its own individual effect on me i i recognized it two days ago and i thought and there it was and it popped up and i went mm -hmm. oh, hello that's interesting yeah and it, yeah it's really it can for me as well like um sorry i lost my train of thought quickly it's so nice to be able to talk to someone as well. i just want to say that it's like <laughs> um but um for so long that that um that uh, obsession or that interest in what i was eating was because i wasn't allowing myself to feel something else mm. and then it just like numbed that something else and it's like it really because then i can eat the cookie no matter what it doesn't matter or i cannot eat it it yeah. like freeze it up but it doesn't become this condition on myself that exactly I've, I've earned it so i can eat it or yeah. i haven't earned it oh well i'm just going to eat the whole entire packet and another yeah. packet and, and then you feel like shit afterwards yeah and it's not a nice feeling i've also no, been and, like yeah. i've also been trying to um also like watch watch myself you know like it's this whole thing of you know when people give you compliments and mm. it's like kind of the first thing that people compliment is like wow you've lost weight or like hey you you're looking so good you're looking so thin it's this and that and it's like trying to learn to be very conscious of that because yeah. you know you have no idea like what you're saying then projects onto the other person like we don't know you know what what they're doing to get to that point and even if it has been a healthy process it's like yeah i i, I don't know. know it's just it's this conversation i had with someone and i was like oof you know like I, I want to compliment you because like I know how hard someone's been working or they've been exercising and they actually are, you know, it's been a healthy process. They're feeling good and it's a good thing, mm -hmm. but I have to like find other ways and other words instead of being like, Oh wow. Like you lost weight. You look so good being like, Oh yeah. You look like your skin is glowing or like this looks healthy or how do you, how do how you much, navigate yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. With so much compassion and, and gentleness. Mm. And for me, I've learned, because you also don't want to be completely quiet like in that moment of somebody either giving you a compliment or you catching yourself wanting to give someone a compliment but yeah i think when i've had it um say to me for me also it's very powerful to learn language so if in my quiet time i go home and i i play out the scenario for myself and i go what does the language look like because often we've only got 10 seconds to say something and you can't like go into it and also maybe you don't want to maybe it's not a safe space for you to tell somebody exactly what you're going through mm. but um i just think of a few months ago i went to go visit my doctor 
and she said to me she commented on my weight in a complimentary way and um I just said to her and she said what have you done differently or something and I said you know that I'm actually on this journey of giving the power back to my body whatever my body is going to be it's going to be and I thought for me that was important for me to say because in the same way if my body gets bigger because it has that freedom to do that I'm giving my body permission to do that as well and I'm not going I'm not taking that compliment and projecting it onto myself of I have to be this way now because that's the only way I'm going to receive affection or receive, receive love or receive validation or receive mm -hmm. somebody seeing me. There's, I think there's so much wrapped up in compliments that really like trigger perhaps more of like, a, Oh, I exist or, Oh, you see me more than, and then we associate that with size and we associate that with how we look. And when I unpack that with myself, I go, okay, I still exist no matter what I look like. And, and then in the, in the other way, how can I give somebody a compliment of like, wow, I can just see how confident you feel today. And that confidence is infectious. I just want to be around you. You, you feel yeah. so warm to me. You, your smile is just because it's real. And no matter what somebody's body size is. And I know that from, from my own journey, I was, I was the small, I was in the smallest body I'd ever had and my lights were not on. And it, and it felt like, it felt really confusing to me when people would say, oh, you look so healthy, you look so happy. And I was like, oh, am I? Am yeah. I healthy? Am I happy? Okay, I must be because people are saying that. Yeah. But like, I didn't oh, feel that. This is, this is like what, this is what happiness should look like, you know? Yeah. And it causes for me a further disconnect because I'm still not, I'm not recognizing how I feel, how I am. So I think yeah. there's, it's just, it's having that honesty with yourself of even somebody saying, and even, and then owning it and someone, if someone does say to you and you go, yeah, I've been having a lot of fun at the gym or this has been something that I've, I've really committed to. I've been committing to myself in this way. And, and I want everybody, like my desire is for everyone to just not feel any shame about mm -hmm. their journey. Cause shame is, I always, when I reflect on my own journey, I was never carrying weight. I was carrying shame. Yeah. And no matter how much weight I tried to lose, that shame never went away. Yeah. And it's unpacking that and going, I, 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 I tried to lose my shame on a treadmill. I tried to lose my shame in a diet and, and it wasn't going away. And, and really, I, 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 I have love and respect for anyone's journey, if, if, however it looks, yeah. if they are just addressing that shame. I think that's, so, all worthy. Yeah. that's so important the way you put that, because like, you know, I think the whole thing with like a, a body positivity movement it's not about being exclusionary to people who do, you know, who, who do, who are like maybe thinner or bigger or, you know, like whatever it's, it, it's inclusive of, of everybody. And yeah. if it's someone that loves to gym, you know, twice a day and that's their thing and that's their choice. Like you mm -hmm. said, it's, it's not about making anyone feel ashamed for being yeah. whoever they are. Yeah. Because it might not be for me. And that doesn't mean yeah. that's not for them. Exactly. I think I've been sitting so much with the fact that so many truths can exist at the same time and it doesn't invalidate anyone's truth. Mm -hmm. And it just, it, it gives me permission to actually just walk in mine. Yeah. And go, yeah, like that, that wouldn't work for me right now. Maybe it'll work in a month's time. I don't know. Yeah. But, and, and I, I support you. And then there's also that, that openness to if that doesn't work for you, there's also something else. Exactly. And I think it's also like, like creating space for people who mm. aren't, who aren't in that mental capacity yet where they feel body positive, you know, where they feel yeah. happy with themselves. It's like, you know, not everyone has gotten to that point yet where they're like, I'm just going to mm. be as, as free as I can be. And it's still letting yeah. those people know that they are a thousand percent included and invited. And yeah, yeah it's, it is, it's yeah, such I, a, it's such a hard, yeah. a hard thing to even balance. Cause it's, you yeah. never want to exclude people no. from, from any journey. No. Yeah. And I think for, like for me, I was the first to exclude myself. Like I, I didn't look like them, so I can't be there. Oh, I don't mm -hmm. look like this. So I can't be there. Or am I, you know, and I think we, want to fit ourselves into boxes to feel safe exactly and it's like how do i actually create that safety 
in myself, yeah. which is forever changing. It's not in a box. It doesn't, doesn't need to look the certain way. It can actually. Exactly. I, I also had that. I had that exact, like, like it's such a negative way of thinking. Cause it was exactly, I was like, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not like supermodel skinny, but then I'm not like, like plus size or super curvy. So like, I, I can't fit into those categories of beauty. So, you know, where do I find myself? And it's really sort of been, been trying to just realize like, it's about everybody. Like no body is the same. Like no single body yeah. looks like any other one body. And that's, yeah, even right now, that's like, phew, like blowing my <laughs> no, mind. Like <laughs> it no, really is. You. It is yeah. because then when, when I reflect on it myself, I go, oh my goodness, then I'm just falling into the same trap that I was in. I need to be this certain way, but just in a different certain way. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, where do I fit in? And I think that's why I'm so passionate about just coming back into your body, into yourself, into your experience and, yeah. and then coming beside each other. Oh, that's so beautiful. Yeah, like it just really coming is. Coming beside each other as... As, and I think that's why it's so powerful that these movements do exist because it's creating awareness and representation. We need to see these things. We need to see every single body. And it's not saying to see this body, we can't see that body. No, we want to see all of the bodies. Yeah, everybody. At the everybody. same time, everybody. <laughs> I think, and I think it's like, I think the saddest thing is, is that that whole thing of, of like, punishing you know when you're going emotionally through through a bad time or you know like life has hit the fan as it happens and then you know everything else feels so bad that you also start to punish your body and you're like well you know maybe if I was thinner if I looked like this or this happened like that person would love me particularly you know when it comes to to rejection and relationships like we were talking about um that whole like revenge body thing and the first Mm. thing you want to change is your appearance when you come out of a rejection and that to me is like the saddest thing because it's we think so little of ourselves we're like oh that person would have to love me if I looked differently or if I fit more of of a specific mold yeah yeah that's it's very heartbreaking actually it is and it's I think so much of even how we spoke um, a few nights ago of like realizing recognizing well society has conditioned me in this thought pattern Mm. how and then building that other thought pattern of going if it wasn't for me it wasn't meant for me me in whatever body I have on the outside and it's I think that's when it's allowing yourself to be more than a body because then I, I if I'm just fixated on the fact that I'm that I'm being invited places or I'm being loved or I'm being accepted based on how I look that's too scary because it's, yeah. it's it, I mean, even... It doesn't feel remember, real. Yeah. It doesn't feel no, real. it's not real. It's not real. And, and then we never, for me, you'll never be seen. You'll never mm-hmm. be loved. Or allow yourself to be loved and give love. Because it's not this, there's not an authentic knowing of yeah. what's being loved. Yeah. Yeah. And I, and just, yeah. I had this, um, this experience where, like I, I had told you that I was like head over heels for this guy who, you know, he, he, he was very honest with me in the beginning being like, Oh, you know, I don't want a relationship. I don't want this. And I was like, Oh my gosh, I'm going to change you because like all these romantic movies and novels and things that I've read, you know, we can change a person. And it was like spending two years, like trying to, trying to like teach someone or show someone how to love me. But it like, mm-hmm. it also became such a physical manifestation for me because I could never like around that person. I could never truly just be myself. I always mm-hmm. felt like, inside smaller because you know he would sometimes say stuff or wouldn't get the jokes that I make and it would make me feel small and stupid so then it became this whole thing of like okay cool maybe he doesn't see the inside of me but like how can like the outside of me you know like yeah. impress and and you know like take up space and have him validate me and it was just like like it was the the loneliest and craziest time because it was just so unfulfilling and it became such like a a thing of like punishing myself like like why why doesn't this guy love me and why doesn't he want me and I didn't get any closure from it and you know it's that whole thing of like say say getting up in the morning and then you're feeling so good and you're having a great day and then you can't find an outfit that makes you like feel good or you think you look terrible and it can completely 
come like I don't know what's the word like de de derail about the day and it's really it's like such training learning how to how to break out of those those chains yeah I really relate like I really it's it's so interesting how I think there's so much just connection and empathy here for a lot of us Mm. because there's yeah it's it's small it's small 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 steps of I remember somebody dear in my life they said to me I always had a somebody in my life had told me I only look pretty with my hair down like my face doesn't look nice with my hair up and it, it's fascinating how we kind of like store these little things and mm. then it's like it's, we're not even that conscious of it it's not this like thing okay now I'm going to put that there and that insecurity is going to rest there and it was interesting when somebody said to me, they themselves, and they didn't, I didn't share this insecurity that I had with them, but they said on some days they realized, oh, I'd like to have my hair down because it's quite cold and my ears might get cold. Or maybe I have my hair up because it's quite hot and I could feel quite hot on my neck. And I, it was kind of like, oh my goodness, I can live from a place of wanting to be kind to myself because of like how I might feel in the day. I might not want to wear these pants because, oh, they're a bit, they hurt me a little bit and not because I don't fit them. Yeah. Like it's just such, it's, it's a completely different way in which we engage with ourselves. Yeah. Like it, it really, it was so different for me. Like, Oh my goodness, I'm, I'm not going to eat this because maybe it's going to give me a sore tummy. Maybe it won't. So I can try it. Let me have a few bites. Okay. I'm not having a sore tummy. Let me keep eating. Yeah. Maybe an hour later I experience a sore stomach. That's okay. How can I care for myself now? Exactly. It's like this, ongoing conversation because it's going to ebb and flow throughout the day yeah and it's really powerful that's the thing that like you said earlier it's like the power of language and yeah you know like the words we use and the words we choose to use like it's so i i it 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 really it, it changes because i think then otherwise I'm going to be operating and living in the voice of my insecurities mm-hmm. that weren't ever really mine. Like, yeah. I, d- I want to take responsibility for storing them, but I took them on from something else, whether it was a 17 magazine that I read when I was 13 and it's shared something about how a woman's body needs to look or a, a person who just was a bit nasty or somebody who was going through something and projected that nastiness onto me or a misunderstanding in a situation and I thought it was me or anything like it can be for me perhaps an abusive partner or an emotionally absent parent like it can it really can be anything and it's looking at these things as an adult and going okay how can I build my own language how can I become my own caregiver in this moment and not rest on these things that 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 happened and also just acknowledging that they happened and going, yeah, that's very real. How do you, my dog is, yeah. (laughs) How do you take, take time with yourself? Like, do you have, is it like an everyday thing where you kind of sit back and and have those conversations with yourself? How does, how does that process look for you? At the moment, there's a lot of time. it's so interesting finding ourselves in this in this time of just and I even thought about before this conversation of like no one's ever done or I don't no one's ever been in lockdown like this before we've not experienced this and there's no and in that way there's no right or wrong way to do it and we can't say anyone's doing it the right way exactly like it just is it's going to be the way that aligns with you or the way that maybe needs to be tweaked to better align with you um but with regards quiet time I I really, I'm, I'm a, a person who, in this time I've realized I'm an extrovert as much as I am an introvert. So I love, oh, sorry, my dog. She might want to, I might That's need okay. to let her out of my room. That's fine. <laughs> um, I think sometimes I, I, I don't want to force myself to have to sit with myself. Mm. So sometimes it can happen while I'm making myself breakfast. I'm, I become aware of thoughts and I just kind of let them, and I let myself sit with them. And I'm I'm learning that it doesn't have to be like from 12.30 until 1.30, I'm going to sit and sit with myself. And actually, I can hold myself throughout the day in the things that I'm doing. I can even hold myself now in conversation with you. And there's it's just this, for me, a freedom of not having this rigid, you're doing it, you're not doing it now. Like, I think, yeah. So sometimes it looks like I love a quiet time in the morning before people start moving around in the house and 
I appreciate like a cup of coffee by myself outside. And, and sometimes I, I don't do that and I just lie in my bed or, yeah, like I said, carrying it throughout the day. Because I think if we are open to ourselves all the time, it's such a beautiful way to start building trust because you're always there. Mm-hmm. It's not like I'm not available to you right now. I'm doing this. Stop coming up. Because things are going to come up all the time. Exactly. I, I learned that about myself and I can't go, I don't want to reject, or I don't want to shut myself down because now is not the good time. I want to be an always good time for myself. Yeah. I feel yeah. like, um, you know, I, I, I used to be so good at like making, making that time where I actually kind of like would either sit or journal or, you know, mm-hmm. especially when I like when things are feel like they're going wrong, I would, I would journal a lot and write through. And I think like the hardest thing is like reading back on those journals and being like, wow, like, what were you thinking? Like you were in this situation and you permitted so much like bad behavior towards you or even towards yourself. But I don't know, I find, and I don't know if it's like, if it's either a form of distraction or a form of therapy, I haven't like figured that side out yet, but it's like, you know, I'm constantly busy, you know, either doing nails or making art or working hard, you know, and it's it's like trying to recognize, okay, cool. Like you're busy and you know, this is, but it's also something that fulfills me. Like, especially if I'm doing people's nails, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, I'm busy and I'm maybe not having time to myself, but this is something that brings me joy. And, you know, learning to find like the positive side in that, but also like, you know, me sitting here realizing I I do need to make more time for myself in that way. Like if I look at how I spent this time in the lockdown, it's either working or, you know, I've been super busy and creative with all this stuff, but it's like Mm -hmm. the minute that I don't have anything to do, I'm like, oh, I'm bored or I'm just scrolling on social media instead of actually like, Hey, just take a moment, just go in and sit and, and be quiet and like allow some stillness. And that's something yeah. that I struggle a lot with is just being still. I had this, um, like if I, if I ever had like a bad experience and it was particularly with, with relationships. Um, mm-hmm. and I felt like there was a lot that I needed to say still, but I wasn't being given the space to say it. I would just sit yeah. down and, and write that person a letter. Like, all of my feelings, everything that I was going through. And, and it's quite, it's, I mean, I have quite a few of those letters still, but it's quite crazy. I mean, I was, I was in this, this one relationship and, you know, I was writing him, he was living overseas and I was here and I was writing him this letter that ended up being like 20 pages, both sides. And I was just like telling him about like my life and things that I was going through, but, you know, I don't think I realized how unhappy I was in that relationship. And it wasn't because of him. He was really amazing and sweet, but it was just the distance and the space and the lack of, you know, communication. We weren't speaking like the same language to each other. And like in that letter, I actually was almost like breaking up with him in a sense, because I remember I have this like vivid memory of like writing, you know, oh, these are like the things that I'm going through. And, and if, if we were ever to break up, I would really hope that we would still be kind to each other and all this. And like, I didn't even realize that that was like me making a decision. And, you know, yeah. until, until like everything hit the fan that it ended up, you know, being, being ugly. And I, I ended up being like very unkind to him. And that's something, you know, that, that I've had to deal a lot with in terms of my, my own guilt. And, and yeah, that was such a, such a strange, a strange thing of, of writing up like all the feelings before I even yeah. understood that I was feeling and like what I was feeling. Yeah. It's such a surrender of control and like mm-hmm. a, and a surrender of expectation. I think so often I recognize how much I have an expectation on something and then it either arrests me and I don't do anything about it because of that perceived expectation or I go along with it in that expectation. And then possibly get my heart broken or have a rude awakening because it's not what I anticipated it to be. And then I can feel um, betrayed by my own self because I did everything that I was meant to do. But that exercise of actually just allowing it to just flow and be, there's, there's so much healing and process in that because we can't. Yeah. I want to say hi to your beautiful mom. (laughs) I wanted to ask you as well, um, like when I make the tile, like for the YouTube thing, are you, are you comfortable that I call you like a body positivity activist? How would you like to, okay. (laughs) Okay, cool. Cause that's how I, that's how I view you. So I was like, I don't really, I'm not really sure, you know, like how, 
how to describe how to describe it so okay cool so, or, or even a self-love advocate okay oh i love that let me write that down <laughs> i like that self-love yeah. advocate yeah i love that that's so cool i'm so grateful for this connection there's so much i think even in sometimes we keep things i don't know and we think those are the things that are going to I don't know, for me, it was, I, I, I'd never shared with anyone that I was on a diet or that I was trying, or, yeah, just like these certain parts of myself. And actually that was my biggest connector. And mm. I think what's so beautiful is when, and then you start to learn about yourself and what you really like and the people you really like and the food you really like and the jokes you really like. And the more you just actually let those parts of yourself be shared. Yeah. yeah. And it's crazy because it's like, it can be the thing that you feel like the most insecure or like the most ashamed of. And yeah. it's actually like the thing that, that is like such a unifying, a unifying aspect. Yeah. In the deepest way. Like it just, it's so beautiful how it like kicks shame in the teeth. Mm -hmm. Like, whoosh. <laughs> and it's like, it's just this beautiful human experience of going like, Oh my goodness. And I, I loved it when you mentioned earlier, like how we've, we've just had narratives of certain movies and I don't know, even how we make up. Our, I, I recognize how I make up my own stories about people online. And I think their lives are a certain way. And it's like, it's really addressing these stories that we have and going, okay, we're not, I'm not a story. I'm a human being. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's going through it and has yeah. gone through it. And, yeah. Yeah, that and like the like the power of of stories and like the narratives that we tell ourselves and the stories that we tell ourselves about ourselves is also uh -huh. that's like such a powerful thing. Like the minute you you shift how you see yourself and how you describe yourself, that mm -hmm. can just open so many more doors to like your own personal freedom. Yeah, because there's no right or wrong way to see yourself. Mm -hmm. It's just that like. I love that exercise of you just discovering within your writing process. There's not this like expectation to know yourself. Yeah. There's a knowing of, of that. It's just, it's yeah. flowing and it's fluid. And yeah. yeah. And sometimes it's like, like I had this thought right now. I was like, like how, how, how I don't even know how to word this. How fully ourselves are we ever ourselves? If we're always learning and growing, like, who I was mm. three or four years ago. I'm, mm. I mean, I'm still in essence the exact same person, but with just so much more wisdom and so much more understanding. And mm. fast forward to five years from now, I'm going to be saying the exact same thing about this person sitting here. Yeah. And that's crazy. That's so crazy to me. Yeah. And for me, it, it, it like that's why I think I could not ever align authentically with telling myself to eat and exercise a certain way and why it disconnected me from my authentic self was because how could I expect myself every single day to eat the same thing or similar things or in one specific realm. And then on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm going to work out and this day I'm going to give myself a rest. And then that day I'm going to do the, this and this and this. It was just not allowing myself to meet myself. Yeah. And, and it's, going, it's such a rigid oh. way of, of, of living your life. You know, you yeah. can't, you can't plan for everything. Yeah, look at us happens. now. Like, <laughs> this is just the, the, the essence of it. You cannot plan. There's, there's, we're not in control over this. And, it's, and the powerful shift is realizing I don't have to be in control of the way that I eat and the way that I move and the way that I experience and feel things. But I can also come beside myself with that loving awareness of mm. what could be good for me in this moment. Exactly. And I think even with you saying that it's, you know, this time that's so unprecedented and so new and yeah. it, you know, it, it is, it is so scary and you know, there's, there's going to be, like yeah. we said the other day, the world is never going to be the same, but it's also, yeah. you know, I've, I've tried to, to really use it as a time to have like, like an epiphany about myself and just think, okay, cool, sit back. You know, I haven't taken, I haven't taken a moment in the past like mm -hmm. year to actually just sit and, and think and, and really discuss what do I want from my life? What do I want my days to look like? How do I want that to manage? Like, who do I want to be and how do I want to be? And then it's mm -hmm. like, 
like figuring that sort of out slowly but surely and not everyone has you know the privilege to to do that and i am so aware of of the security and the comfort that i have to be able to sit back in a time like this and use it to be positive because not everyone has that but it is sort of i'm like okay cool if i can if i can have control over one thing then let me just think about my life and, and like storyboard it. How do I want it to look? Where would I want it to take place? And, and what, well, like, what are the things that bring me joy? And why am I not doing that? I have that feeling of like, your life is like however long a piece of string is. And it's like, wh why, why wouldn't I want to try and do the things that could bring me joy? And that I could also try and bring joy to other people and like educate people and yeah, it's like all these big, big, crazy dreams, but it feels wow. good. I'm so glad you shared that with me because it's so, it just, it sits right here because it's really, I think we can, I have a choice to live my life thinking I'm in complete control. And I, and I, I think about it often of like, in this moment, what do I have and how can I use it? What's going to find me? Well, how am I going to connect and find joy in this moment? And I think that's why this, this, scenario that we're in or this pandemic crisis this time is also such a time to acknowledge how many things can exist at the same time how you can feel this and this and and yeah it's just for me I'm, I'm learning to find a quiet and a compassion in that of knowing like there's so much unknown and there's also me in this moment of how can I meet it doesn't invalidate any anything or anyone yeah experiencing this yeah. yeah exactly and it's it's yeah. also so it's such a you know like you know a lot of people saying oh you can we can find comfort in the fact that like the whole world is, is going through this but i also have to be so wary of of that whole saying because the whole world is going through it in a completely Definitely. different way no yeah. one is going through it completely the same the same yeah it's very true I've experienced it over the past two days of just realizing um, in this time I'm, I have more accessibility to be on my phone because I'm not anywhere else. I'm not driving my car or I'm not looking after the children I look after in the afternoon. So I can't be on my phone then. Yeah. And now there's this kind of I'm learning how to navigate my days because like I, I personally for my own mental health cannot be on it too long. Like I, I feel it's like a vacuum. Mm -hmm. it can, it, it, become a bit of a vacuum it is a and also yeah there's i have to acknowledge like i'm not stepping out of this and then seeing the outside world and i don't want this to become my outside inside world yeah so it's just it's kind of like finding that balance one day at a time because it's really that's for me that's all i the only way i can take it and going like okay today i'm realizing how much i'm going to this phone to kind of fill something what is this yeah. thing that i'm trying to fill so, that's exactly yeah. that's exactly like how I've been. I have I have like all these plans like to be productive and to be creative and like you know have time that's going to actually produce something but then mm -hmm. I find myself sitting for like 2 hours on the couch yeah. just like doing nonsense on my phone and 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 I'm like I'm so weary. I'm like this is stealing your time. You know, mm. like some, some of it I, I do get value from and I am learning, mm. you know, I, I follow a lot of people that are educa like educational and informative, but I have to be so, so conscious of that. And like, that's such a good thing that you, you brought up and now I, I need to practice that more during this iso like isolation time of being like, okay, cool. You know, today, today I want to try and like practice just not being on that and being truly present and maybe even like reading or doing art. And, and even then it's, it's been so hard to like build up the like mental capacity to just take that step because it's really been, it's felt so exhausting to just do that. But yeah, it's yeah, so different. I, mm. It's so different. There's such a shift in, and I, I, I reflected on that now of like, this has never happened before. We're going through something that's never happened before. We've never, and, and even when I think, I want to go outside and I want to be in the world, but the world is not what the world was yeah. three months ago. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it, I'm not even walking out into something that I, that will resemble something I'm familiar to. Yeah. So it's so like, even the, it was before the lockdown, I thought, Oh, I'm, 
I'm going to go to the shop because then at least I'll like see some people. It was when we were still allowed out. But I went to the shop and experienced something. I, there was so much fear of other. And I thought, oh no, this isn't what I, like this isn't what was before. And there wasn't yeah. this just this, yeah. So it's, it's we're going to, I think with compassion and with just a gentleness for ourselves and one another to navigate the healing on so many levels through this time. Yeah. That's so important. For me, yeah. It's like, how, how do we come out of this and what is, how does our healing look? Yeah. And how, how are we going to be there for each other and for other people and for the people yeah. who have so much less than what we have? Yeah. There is so, so much to just consider. Mm. And then in the same, and that's, I, it's, it was this comfort that came to me and, and I realized just because someone thinks or feels or experiences something different does not invalidate the way that I'm learning about things and about myself. And it's yeah. how these, all these things can exist at the same time. And they don't take away from each other. They do not invalidate each other. They do not, because I think it would be such a, a sadness if that disconnected us all. Yeah. Everyone's coping mechanism is whatever it yeah. needs to be in that moment. Yeah, because we're learning it in real time. Yeah. I, I don't know what my coping mechanisms are for this yet because yeah. I'm, definite, I'm definitely being aware of, of, um, of an old coping mechanism of, of relying on food and, and my body being a certain way. And I'm, and I'm, yeah, I'm looking at that and I'm loving myself through that. But I also don't know, maybe there's some other coping mechanisms that come out. And for me, I'm, I'm, I'm noticing that it could be my cell phone. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> I'm like, that's okay. <laughs> so yeah. this is fine. This is it's like the room is on fire. This is okay. I gotta get away. I gotta get away from this trap. It is. It's such a oh. problem yeah yeah oh we're just navigating it and learning <laughs> <laughs> laughter is so important <laughs> it really is it's so it's yeah. just it's so good and it feels Feeling. nice we need and... to laugh we need to cry we need to connect and we need to just yeah <laughs> yeah flip i'm so yeah. grateful you you've initiated this yeah it's me like, too it's been so i want to say we need chat. to do this <laughs> yeah. it's been so nice to just like hang out yeah. i feel like you're sitting on my bed <laughs> it does it does feel like that it's so great yeah thank really you so much for for agreeing to to be part of this and i'm so honored mm. like it's it's still like i'm just like oh yeah it's so, it's i love it so much and i'm yeah. so grateful and yeah flip this is why i love social media this is such a part of it of like, yeah this is like the, the good the, the side powerful tool. yeah the powerful tool of it is like you will meet people that you may never have met like and connected with and yeah. had conversations with that you just value yeah. and love and appreciate and also like like having the courage to do that because you know a lot of people are like very like sus when it comes to meeting other people online and I'm, I'm always like oh I'm just gonna talk to everybody like make make new friends and cause into you gonna like Jamie <laughs> she shouldn't <laughs> chat like some people are stranger danger but it's, yeah, just like connecting with so many amazing people who are so willing to just share knowledge and to just share their experiences of like what life is. And it's, I think it's yeah. so amazing to hear those perspectives because I, I've learned a lot, you know, like no, me too. watching, watching it. your page and, and the way you speak and it's, yeah, it's, it's super, it's very insightful and like very encouraging for me. Oh, and your creativity makes me so happy. It's <laughs> like, I think that it's like you are shining your light from the jammy stairs. Like, I just yeah. love it. I love Missy it. You see dancing girl, shout out to her. <laughs> <laughs> it just makes me so happy. There's just, I, I think that's really like the message that I hope to go out with. It's like everybody just shine their lights because it's so warm. Mm. When you see somebody creating their magic, and that's truly when, I think it was Amira who shared your, your content and I was like what is this who is this this is amazing <laughs> like it just it has such a, a beautiful impact yeah. on my life and I'm just so grateful for it and that's why it's like yeah it, it, it really has a lot of power and it I does. think so I'm like this little light of mine I'm gonna let it <laughs> that's what I've been thinking this whole time I'm like stuck in that song and then I'm also stuck with like Mandela in my head being like you give people permission and I was like yes you do you, everyone has the permission yeah <laughs> i'm gonna end this and end up editing not that there's much that i can edit it was all so good
<laughs> oh, enjoy it. Do you enjoy the editing process? Yeah, so far it's like, it's more just, you know, if the internet cuts out or things like mm -hmm. that, there hasn't really been much to edit. The girl from America who's like the nail tech, her dogs went crazy in the one thing and she was like, I'm so sorry. And I was like, it's okay, let me meet them. And that was quite cool. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was really oh, cool. It's so much wonderful. I love that. It's, even as a metaphor, the things we want to edit out are the things that's going to like. Yeah, that make it make good. It so great. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so sometimes I'm just like, sorry, people are just going to have to sit and watch for an hour. But we need, I, I love it. I think now it's more like we have the time to sit with each other. So yeah. you can decide. And there's beauty in that. If you don't want to sit, that's okay. That's fine. Sit, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. It's that's safe. kind of how like my approach has been. It's like not everyone's going to sit for 45 minutes and watch, or maybe they'll have it like playing in the background. But, yeah. you know, for the people who are like, hey, I actually want to learn a bit about like, this nail thing or makeup thing or like learn a bit more about like being kind to myself and my body they'll watch it and they'll be the ones who will take something away from it which is really cool i love it because i yeah. think of every time i've i've been that one person to receive something and it's meant so much mm -hmm. and why would i deprive why would i steal that from another person yeah out of fear exactly. you're amazing and you inspire yeah. me thank you you <laughs> same 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 <laughs> Cool. I'm giving you the biggest hug. <laughs> oh, a friend of mine said we hug ourselves. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that feels good. <laughs> oh, so cute. I know. Cool. Oh, Jamie. I'll chat to you Have again later, day. though. Bye. Thanks, Jamie.